All right, welcome back to another episode of Iron Sharp and Iron. Um, we wanted to to continue. It's kind of a two parter, but it's on a different side. The Lord's been doing that a lot lately, where it's kind of been like two sides of a coin kind of thing that we've been looking at. And um, we had talked before, uh, for those if you missed it, just a quick recap on on why is it that we're not seeing the 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 journey or we're not moving as fast as we thought we should. Um, we're, we're quick to repent and we feel that forgiveness right away. And yet we do it again and again and again. And we talked about the cleansing and we talked about how that cleansing sometimes is a process. It could require you to cut things out of your life. It could require you to let go of friends, let go of relationships. It could require you to, uh, move or do different things that, that, that kind of let that cleansing have its full effect. And we talked about why it's important that when conviction is there, let it do its thing. You know, if you if you have a wound that you're trying to clean out or you're trying to heal and you pour some rubbing alcohol on it and it burns and then you just pull it away, well, let it go. Let it continue till it stops burning because the burning is a signal that it's working. It's right. a signal that it's doing its job. <clears throat> and so when we when we talk about that, it's like that's that's the that's what the right response. The right response is let it do its effect. I'll I'll let it stay there until it's done. But when we talk about what happens if you don't, what happens if you hear it and you, it's, it's, you get corrected or, or conviction hits over and over and over again, and you go, oh, sorry, God, oh, sorry, God, oh, sorry, God, what's the end result of that? And that's kind of what we wanted to talk about today is like, what's the other side of that? We talked about the receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. And we talked about you know, in Bible days, they had no idea what grafting was. They, they could graft plants, but they didn't have any concept of grafting skin. That was yeah. way beyond their understanding at that point. But we do understand what grafting is, mainly with burn, burn units and stuff like that. And uh, there, that process could be depending on the degree of burn. There's yeah. first degree, second degree, third degree burn. The worse it is, the the the, the greater the process, yeah. and it's kind of like with same with sin. When people have been in in gross sin or in, in drugs or whatever for years, we we the problem with the church a lot of time they want this instant, yeah. instant drive through. We talked about that new skin, you know, just deep deep up. Oh, it's yeah. good. Yeah, the, they have a thing <laughs> called new skin. It's a, basically it's a. It's a sterilized uh, super glue. And if you get a cut, you can super glue it. And they, but see, it depends on how deep the cut is and where yeah. it is. You can't use that for just anything and everything. And that's kind of what the, you know, a lot of time people, t they think that the one size fits all. And there are certain things that are worse than others. Uh, and sometimes the amount of time you've been involved in that thing, mm -hmm. uh, you can't be in, you could be forgiven of sin. The guy comes to the Lord at, at 50 and been sinning for 50 years or 45 or 40 years. Um, uh, he can be instantly forgiven, but the, the effects of that 40 years it may take him a while to be cleansed of all that because he has memories. He had yeah. that no doubt there's demonic spirits that have come in that are keeping the past present. There's a lot more stuff involved. So that cleansing, you know, it's, that's why the Bible says, remember the Lord in the days you've used. Yeah. If you can get saved when you're younger before you do all the stupid things, <laughs> uh, but that's what makes my testimony great. No, that's what, me, no. Our no, we already did an episode did, on testimony. <laughs> testimony's <laughs> Don't not, do that. We went there. <laughs> testimony's not about how stupid you've been. Uh, that does not give God any glory. Right. But the danger we're talking about today is when you've been involved in something for a long period of time, there comes a... It can harden your heart. Yeah. The Bible says in Proverbs, a man being often reproved hardens his own neck, and that shall be cut off without remedy. Um, you don't want to. You don't want to fall into that trap. You don't want to keep yeah. repenting. You always want to repent, but you don't want to keep repenting um, of the same thing over and over. That's the definition of crazy. Crazy's yeah. doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. 
if you're having to keep repenting over and over of certain things, you're not actually either you're repenting, your, your repentance is not correct or not yeah. right, um, or you're just making provision for your flesh, which the Bible says don't do. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, because that can happen. You know, you can get to you can get to a situation. Um, and I remember there was this short video uh, that John Bevere did one time of this guy, uh, and he's in prison. And all of a sudden, someone comes along and they unlock the door and they say, "Hey, man, you're you're free. Good news, you're you're free." And he goes, "Oh, great." And then he goes and sits back down and continues eating his snack. And he goes, "What are you doing? You're free. Like, you've been forgiven. It's all washed away." Yeah, it's great, man. I heard you the first time, and he just keeps eating. He's like, "What? You need to leave. Like, if you don't leave, then you know what I mean. Then they're gonna come back and lock this door, and you're gonna you're 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 still living in the very thing that you've been forgiven of." And I think a lot of times what you're talking about is that I don't want people to go off the deep end and be like, "Oh, so what you're saying is, you know, I can be forgiven, but there's still work involved." Well, absolutely, there's work involved. You're not saved by the works; you were already forgiven. But to be cleansed does require work. And so if you were in prison and in bondage to things and you've been forgiven of those things, but you stay in that jail cell, if you don't change your environment, if you don't change your circumstances around you, you're going to fall again. Yeah. And you're going to continue to fall and you're going to continue to be into that bondage. And what you talked about with the whole, the, the stiffening of his neck, you don't want to ever get to that place, you know, where the scripture says he falls upon the rock is broken. It's great. It produces repentance. That's what we want. But if you keep falling on that rock, eventually it proves the hardness of your own heart. And then the rock has to fall on you. And the Bible says it grinds you to powder. And you never want to be to the place where God has to almost completely unmake you to get you humble enough to receive what he's trying to tell you. And that's the danger of being in a church with revelation or even being in a church that moves in the spirit a lot because you'll start to elevate spiritual gifts and you'll forget that there's this other part of you that still needs to be saved. And when you get reproved over and over again, eventually it no longer stings. Eventually, mm. I mean, I remember there was a time when he used to correct us and spankings were part of the thing. You'd get a whooping. And uh, there comes a certain age, and you could always tell that age when the whooping was like, yeah, it hurt, but I'd rather take the whooping than restriction. I'd rather go hang out with my friends, so go ahead, whoop me three times so I can be on my day. And it's almost like you knew that I had already done a cost-benefit analysis of, okay, well, what's 10 minutes of pain, but I still get to go hang out with my friends Verse, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And we do that a lot with God. I think we, 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 we look at it and we say, well, he's always there to forgive us. He's always there to forgive us. And, and it's like, well, forgiveness is, is great, but at some point you have to understand how this is hurting his heart, how this is affecting that relationship. You know, you wanted to go over a, a scripture in Hebrews, and we oftentimes quote the second half of the scripture, Hebrews 5.12, but if you back up one verse, it says, of whom we have many things to say. So we, it's talking about God. It's talking about how Jesus was uh, the priest of Melchizedek. He's both king and priest. And how there's a lot of things that we have to say about that. There's a lot of things that go deeper than just, oh, you forgave me of my sins. And that's what he wants to get into. But he says, we have many things to say, and they're hard to be uttered. These are hard sayings. Seeing that you're dull of hearing. For when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need of someone to teach you again the first principle. And then we all know the second half of that, at least here around here, because we yeah. talk about it all the time. But see, there comes that place where it's like you, you get this dull of hearing. You're numb to it. Mm. And it's that conviction and that stripe. It no longer is piercing your heart the way that it should be. And um, while we were talking, there was another scripture that dropped in my spirit. And 1 Corinthians 15.10 it says, but by grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace that was bestowed upon me was not in vain. And I feel like sometimes we, 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 we get stuck in this place where we experience the grace of God. We experience his forgiveness. We experience the, the cleanliness and the holiness that we come into. And then we take the grace for advantage. You know what I mean? And, and grace, it's, it, Paul goes on to write that he doesn't want grace to be wasted on him. It's not in vain that his grace that he gave me was for a purpose and that I want to repay that purpose. Well, I don't like it when people try to use grace as, well, it's all grace, Brother Mike. It's, it's nothing about us. It, it's, <laughs> it's all grace. Uh, uh, Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. 
Yes, we need his grace. We need God's unmerited favor. We need God's power and desire to do the will of God. I get all that. But there is a part we play in this. We are not robots. We are free moral agents. We have free will, free choice. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, as unto mature, mm -hmm. but as unto carnal, even as to babes in Christ. This, this, what this, what we're talking about today, if we don't grow up, we stay babes in Christ, and that's where you become dull of hearing. How much conversation can you have with a baby? I mean, it's pretty one-sided. <laughs> and I think a lot of times God is looking for us. He's wanting to have fellowship with us. He's wanting to do, to draw out things and get into that uh, uh, koinia, that fellowship in spirit, where every parent worth his salt looks for the day his son or daughter, they can actually have adult conversation. Yeah. And that child is now bringing out things. You just did it a minute ago, talking yeah. about doing the analysis of what uh <laughs> it was what, a whooping versus restriction yeah, <laughs> to lose my phone or uh, you know and as we Play have the be, odds <laughs> we have to be wise as a parent to know when that okay that the the butt whooping doesn't work as well as it used to when they're little it works great but you know the thing is if we do it right we're we should not always have to live under the threat of consequences or pain yeah i don't serve god because if I don't, he's going to fry me. I don't have that mentality. I don't right. serve God, so I don't go to hell. Uh, it might have started off that way as a babe in Christ. Uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's not, not fear of him, but it's a reverential fear. God wants, you and I have, it's a good example of it, because we have great fellowship. I look forward to conversating with you. I love yeah. to draw out what's in you. When we get together, these podcasts, are, Tuesdays are podcast day. I come into the church grinning because it's podcast day. We just, because <laughs> when we get together like this, iron sharpens iron. The yeah. things of God in me and the things of God in Kevin, my son, they just start igniting. And it, it, it's, it's amazing how these things, how, I just love how the Word of God works. Yeah. Iron sharpens iron. I mean, to some people, they wouldn't even know what that even means. But you and I, we just, it just, the things of God in you, deep calls unto deep. We could change yeah. the name and call it deep <clears throat> calls unto deep. Yeah. And it's the same thing because the deep things of God that you've learned and experienced in Christ speak to the things, the, the deep things. That, and see, most people are never tapping into the deep. Yeah, they're living in the shallow, the shadow, shallow ends, you know. And, and Ezekiel, he said, I told the guys, he said, I went out and measured a thousand cubits, and it was up to the ankles. And then I went out another thousand cubits, and it was up to the knees. And then I went out another thousand cubits, and it was up to to my loins or whatever. Then it then it says, and then it was rivers, waters to swim. We got to get it over our head. As long as you can stand on the bottom, it, you're standing in your own strength. You're not living by faith till it gets beyond what you can do. Yeah. We have lived in this ministry by faith <laughs> for almost 50 years. When I hear people and they talk about their budgets and all how much money they have in reserve, my goodness, folks. I mean, I, I get being wise, but... You're not trusting God. It got to yep. a point where you quit trusting God because you had enough reserve that if you, if if nobody showed up at church for a month or two, you could continue to make all the payments because you're you're self sufficient. Right. God does not want His children to be self sufficient. He wants us to trust Him. Yeah. And this is where that that getting hardened, that uh, dull of hearing. We always want to get to a place where we're, we don't we don't have to trust God. We want God to use us, but we don't not we don't have to trust Him. And here it's a catch twenty two. Yeah, you can't be used by God without trusting God. Because when you start moving into prophetic or in words and knowledge, you want God to write it out, type it out, <laughs> give you a, a, a hard copy. Yep. You want to rehearse it so you say all the words right. And that's not what he does. He gives you little bits and pieces. You say that by faith, 
and then he gives you more. Um, yeah. A lot of times when I prophesy or minister in the gifts, I close my eyes. I learn this because if people look at you funny like, what? Then you, It affects your faith. <laughs> yeah, you start thinking, well, I'm missing it. I, maybe I didn't hear from God. And a lot of times you're hitting it and they're just resisting it. Yeah. Or it's like, whatever. So I just, I learned a long time ago, you could fix that by just closing your eyelids. I mean, this isn't that deep, people. <laughs> you, according to your faith, be it unto you. But bottom line is, we want, if we want to move in the power of God. We want to see, we want to get, Paul wrote one time and said, my preaching and my teaching was not with uh, enticing uh, words of man's which, wisdom, yeah. but in demonstration of the spirit and power. God's trying to get us to a place where we can show the world God through supernatural abilities, through words of knowledge, through the power of God, where people are going, there's no way you could have known that. Only God knew that about me. Uh, that happens a lot with me when I minister to people in, the, uh, in deliverance and stuff. I get all kind of downloads on their life and things, and I tell them. And they go, well, only God could have known that. Uh, we want people to have God encounters, not man encounters. Not, not People are they're tired of seeing what man's abilities, what yeah. man can do. They're tired of the whole skinny jeans and fog machines, as Mario Morello puts it. They don't want to see that. They don't want the, we don't want fog machines. I, I, would, love the, I would love the Shekinah glory of God. Yeah. But if you have to do it with the fog machine, what's the point in a, for you that are listening today, this is the other side of that coin. You have to call upon the Lord while he's near. When the presence of God is moving and you're have, and the Lord's in the room, call upon him. We had a meeting last night, a prayer meeting last night, and the Spirit of the Lord moved on a, one of the sisters, and she said, I'm full. If yeah. you need healing, come come, yeah. come here. I'm gonna, I, I, I have faith to believe that God could do anything. And she ended up praying for almost everybody in the church. And that's how, yay. Yeah. <laughs> Some of y'all going, well, was it you? Was it Kevin? Nope. I'm telling you, <laughs> that, that insecurity, pastors, get over it. You want to see your children, spiritual children, yeah. step up. That is the fruit of what you're doing. If you're doing it right, you'll reproduce sons and daughters. A good marriage produces children. A healthy yeah. marriage will produce children. A healthy church produces sons and daughters that can minister the same things that the leadership can. You want to reproduce yourself in the body. You want the devil when he looks in the church and pokes his old bony head in there. He wants you don't want to see one one leader and a hundred people. You want to see hundreds of leaders. Yeah. And the devil's like, oh my gosh. That's what he saw on the day of Pentecost. He looked yeah. in there and thought, well, I killed the Jesus guy. I think I've stopped the movement. And on the day of Pentecost, he went, oh, my goodness. Yeah. This, I see 120 Jesuses now. This thing's getting out of control. He walks out, gives an altar call, 3, and 3,000 people, 3, people get, saved. get saved. So he's like, what? <clears throat> What's happening? That's, that's what we need to see. But that has to happen when people have encounters. Yeah. You need to have encounters with God. When the Lord's moving at church and you're having it and the Spirit of God is moving, or the Lord's moving on you, it could be... You could be listening to a song. Man, there are certain people that do it for me. And yeah. when I hear just their lyrics will take you to the throne room. When you're having that encounter with the Lord, act on it. If yeah. it's happening in your bedroom at night and just laying in bed and a certain song comes on and you feel the Holy Spirit moving on you and, you, and you're well enough, with, you, you feel that brokenness coming. Well, I, don't, don't dictate to God when he can and can't. He don't like that. Yeah, he doesn't we, like being put in a box. No, we he can minister us in our in on our beds and yep. in the shower. There's no place that he can't touch you. So, but uh, that comes from that really comes from like not being dull of hearing. You know, yeah. when you think about, you know, one of the scriptures we went over on Tuesday uh, was in James, where it says, "Be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves." And I, I think there's there's two people that kind of respond to conviction that comes that struggle with it. One is the hearer who hears it, and now it's knowledge, and then they misinterpret that as, oh, I'm going to use that tool later, instead of, oh, my gosh, I need to repent now, and then immediately start using the tool. If, you're, if your car battery is dead and I give you a new battery, you don't be like, okay, cool, I'll use this eventually, you know, and then put it in your trunk. 
move remove the old battery put the new battery in there's there's a response that should be there and that's what you shared on sunday was that draw on the lord while he's near call on him when he's near if he's already in the room why would you wait until later so you have the hearers only kind of deceiving themselves and then you have the other people who go and they say yeah i I kind of tried it i did it and you know it's just it was too hard so i kind of just throttled back it's like okay well then you didn't see it yet you didn't see the word the way that god sees it you didn't see your sin Mm. the conviction wasn't there and that scripture kind of dropped in my spirit of just you never want to get to a place where god says you're no longer my son now you're a reprobate. Now you're somebody, you're, you're, you're a bastard, not a son. I can't take responsibility for you because you don't hearken to my word. And, and when, you, when we share stuff, sometimes we'll share, it, it'll be about the training of the soul and you'll see people kind of, and I can, I can feel it sometimes in spear where people go, oh, here we go again. And it's like, we wouldn't have to go again if you would journey. But the fact that you have stiffened your neck to this point, the fact that you've fallen on this rock and you go, ooh, Yep, here we go again. Training, you know, training the soul. It's all about the soul. Do the work. If you know what you're talking about, being used by God, you cannot effectively be used by God if you've got this stuff still in you, messing mm. with you. And so, this dole of hearing, you're not going to hear that voice that says, "Come to the altar," when you don't give an altar call. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You're not going to hear that voice that says, "Stay late." Oh, but I got barbecue plans. Cancel them stay late. You know, you're not going to hear that voice that says one thing is needful. And you're going to be like, but I'm really into this. And, you know, this is going to start and, you know, baseball season or football season or hockey or what, you know, oh, I got this, you know, this, this hobby that I have. It's just my only hobby. It's all I have, you know, and it's like, God doesn't care that much. It's like, but one thing's needful. You know what I mean? And so if you, if you get to the point where you're dull of hearing, you don't hear that still small voice when God's trying to pierce your heart to change you. And you never want to get to that place where God says, I can't correct you anymore. Yeah. I can't correct you because the correction comes and you're just like, Phew, so-and-so needed that. And that's the other thing is it breaks my heart to see these people who like, who were you who once were dead? Do you not remember that you were dead and God saved you and that grace that was given on your life? And yet you would be so ungracious to people so quick to judge, so quick to just be like, nah, you know what I mean? That's a dullness that a cat happens to where your, your love kind of waxes cold and you no longer. And then, and then before you know it, you look back and you say, where, where did I fall? Where did I get off this path? And it's because conviction came and you didn't respond properly. And it came again and it came again. And eventually you stopped feeling the conviction. Yeah. Well, that's the danger of sometimes in denominational churches, believing doctrines of devils. This whole once saved, always saved. You can't lose it no matter what happens. That that does not even make sense. Uh, That's like saying once married, always married. And we live in a country with a 50% divorce rate. Obviously, that's not true. Yeah. But the Bible said there's so many scriptures that say... um, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. What fellowship has righteous with unrighteous? What communion yep. with Christ with Baal and with the temple of God with idols? And he says, you are. I, you know, you, this is the temple of God. And he goes on and tells them to, uh, I'm going to just look that up. I don't want to mess that up because <laughs> that's a good one. Because there's, there's a part we have to do. Um, it's Corinthians 7. Um, um, Second Corinthians. This is very professional. Back you're, up a little bit. You're, you're not. You're wasting air time. <laughs> we have eternity. Um, verse eighteen. Well. Where are you? Second Corinthians 7. Well, I've got it almost quoted. Um, maybe it's 1 Corinthians. Y'all aren't very professional, Brother Mike. 
Well, that's, but see, God can still use us because you don't have to be professional. You have to be willing and obedient. Yep. If you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Um, yeah, that's the only requirement is the willing and obedient. But see, even the second part of that verse, the obedience, you know what I mean? I think sometimes people will will say like, oh, well, you know, God can use anybody. It's like, yeah, I understand he can absolutely use anybody, but you have to be willing and obedient. You have to step out in faith and you have to be obedient. And it's not just obedient to listen to him in that word. You have to be obedient in the other things he's given you because God never will 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 change his principles or bend his rules to get somebody to do something because it says faithful in little, faithful in much. So if you're not faithful in the little things he gives you, if you're not faithful when you get convicted about your anger, you get convicted about you know, the way that you've been dealing with your kids, you've been convicted about the priorities you have in your life, then why in the world would you be entrusted to be faithful with somebody's soul, to be faithful with a word for somebody that could just drastically change their life? We have to be faithful. We always talk about being faithful in these little things so that God can trust you. And you've said before, if you're not faithful to hear the voice when it says, make a pan of brownies for your neighbor, you're not going to be faithful when he says, go tell this person they're healed. <laughs> you know? I found it. It says, uh, uh, if you're not... Do not, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship of righteous with, un, with lawlessness and what communion of light with darkness, what concord has Christ with Belial or Baal or what part has a believer with an unbeliever and what agreement the temple of God with idols, with idols. You are the temple of the living God as God has said, listen to this, I will dwell in them and I will walk in them and I will be their God and you should be my, my people. Therefore... Okay, this is our responsibility. Therefore, come out from among them, be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Almighty. People a lot of times don't give the, don't. We have a responsibility. Our part is to come out from among them, be separate. Don't touch the unclean thing. Yeah. You can't hang out and, and, and handle unclean things all the time and not get dirty. And yeah. there's a scripture in the Old Testament that talks about if a priest bearing holy flesh touched that which is unclean, does he make that thing clean or does he he become he himself become unclean? unclean. Yeah. And the the truth is it gets you, yeah, gets you dirty. Yep. And that's why when I first got saved, I broke ties with all my old friends because I had seen the light. I I was ready for change. They weren't. And if I continue to hang out, if I continue to be unequally yoked, if I continue to fellowship, that means hang out, party, yeah. hang out. If I continue to fellowship <clears throat> with them, I would have I would have backslid. Well, you don't know that. Oh, yes, I do. This is where people fool themselves. Yep. To thine own self be true. Quit lying to yourself. Quit saying you have the grace or you have the spiritual strength to be around all these people and not affect them. It, 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 nowhere in the scripture it says pray for spiritual strength that you can be so you can hang out with all this and not affect you. No. The Bible says don't be unequal. Don't, don't do it. Yeah. God told Jeremiah, said, let them return to you, but you don't return to them. Especially when a baby is so vulnerable when it's newborn. Newborn mamas will not even let their baby be held by other people, especially somebody that's got puffy eyes and runny nose. Let me hold your baby. <laughs> it's like, no, keep away. <laughs> get, get your germ-infested snotty nose away from my baby because they're babies. They're, right. Their immune system is not as developed. So much the more. Quit making excuses for this. Uh, well, I... We talked Sunday about the message was entitled "Blow Up the Bridge," but see the 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 guys we're talking about today. The other side of that coin is the um, the dull of hearing. That's why they're dull of hearing. They didn't blow up the bridge. Yeah. They keep fellowship in sin. They keep fellowship in strife. They keep yep. fellowshipping uh, things that aren't don't start off sin but become sin. Fishing's not a sin, but if you fish every day, all the time, now it's become idolatry. You, if you can't go home without leaving work, without going and drowned in the worm, that thing, you're addicted to it. 
Yeah. So some things that aren't even sin can become sin because we give it such a high placement in our life. And then anytime the word comes and the word is, you know, make sure your priorities seek ye first the kingdom. You're so dull. Of, oh, here we go again. Coming after that golden calf. Come, you know, like I, like I have some kind of problem. This is all, you know what I mean? Like I don't do it all the time. I work hard. I've got all these kids. This is my one thing that I have that I get, you know, and it's like you're, you're, you, you, that dole of hearing will, it will literally blind you from conviction. It will blind oh, you man. from those things. And it really, it really is, it really, it's, it's pride. I mean, it really Catch, builds up. Catching pride. fish is a cool thing. I, yeah. I, I've been fishing, I've caught fish, but nothing like catching men. Yep. Jesus said to Peter, come follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. It's a greater thing to be used by Almighty God to help a life change to the point of eternally. Yeah. I'm going to see people in heaven that we caught that changed the course of their life. And a million years from now, they'll go, man, I'm so glad you were fishing that day because, <laughs> and God used you to reach me. Um, see, men, we, we, we're we so carnal. We're so temporal. We, yeah. we miss the big picture. I love that scene in, in Braveheart where uh, William Wallace is saying you're you're so busy squabbling over the crumbs from from Longshank's table you miss the God given right you've been given for freedom and uh, man I like movies like that that inspire you and that's I feel like that's a lot of times the church they're just they're look they're they're they they're eating crumbs when there's a meal for them yeah and uh, there's something there's things we have to do if you're I, I told Kev before we came out here, I said, Kev, you know, some people don't want to be disciples. They want to, when they die, they want to go to heaven, but they don't want to be a disciple. Yeah. And I'm going to just say this to you, you that are watching us on a regular basis and you kind of feel that connection. Um, don't waste time with people that it isn't, it's either not their time or season, or they just not going to do it. They just don't. They don't They're, have that desire. No, they don't want to be that invested. Paul wrote and said, "I." Uh, he said, I hope to send Timothy to you so I can learn how you guys are doing. But he said, I don't have anybody. This is what Paul, who helped, wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. He <laughs> said, establish many churches. He says, I don't have anyone like Timothy who will naturally care for your state. Then it says, because... For all seek their own and not the things that are Jesus Christ. That's one of the saddest scriptures in the New Testament for me. Here's a and an, this is towards the end of his career. Yeah, he's, he's, I mean, this is towards the end of his missions. He's already and he goes. This is it. That's all I got. I got this one guy I can send to you, and he will. He will. He don't mind coming because he nat he really yeah. cares. But he naturally, it's it's an it's he loves you like I do. He naturally yeah. ca will care for you. Not, well, Paul sent me. I don't want to be here. People feel that. But he said, this guy will naturally, he has the same love in his heart as, as I do for you. And all men seek their own, not the things that are Jesus Christ. I have found that in 50 years of ministry, only God can open spiritual eyes. Guys, quit trying to pull them open and pry them yeah. open. If they don't have eyes to see, Jesus said it over and over. He said, you have eyes, you can't see. You have ears, you can't hear. And they're going, we're right here. We hear what you're we saying. You. <laughs> yeah. And if you're watching The Chosen, you're probably picking up on that. that he's a little bit frustrated. Getting frustrated. You know, man, this last episode was so good. Yeah. He got so excited about Gaius willing to, to come and say, look, you don't even have to come to my house. You just yeah. speak the word. And and you could see the look on, on the guy that plays Jesus going, oh, my <laughs> My own disciples haven't got this revelation. Yeah. And it that see, God wants us to believe him. He wants us, when he says that to do something, we just re respond quickly and yeah. not, well, let me try the spirits. Let me see whether he's like, try the spirits. My gosh, you don't know my voice. I'm your yeah. shepherd. I've been your shepherd for 50 years, Mike. I don't try the spirit. Last night, God spoke to me in the balcony. I was up there praying and our, and our prayer, and he just said, go down there and say this. And I went down and just delivered what he told me to say. Yeah. I didn't have, try the spirit. I wonder if this is God. Uh, we yeah. miss we miss whole opportunities when we're trying this. Well, that just, that just comes from, that comes from a place where people, the Bible says, my sheep no. know my voice. And see, this goes back to kind of a principle we've talked about before. You have the sheep 
that are part of the flock of God. They know his voice and they hearken to his voice. And then you have the grazers that hop the fence and go, oh, that grass looks good. They jump over and they nibble a little bit. And you say, great, now let me run my hands through. Whoa, 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 no, no, sir. Don't you're, worry about me. You're not my Work shepherd. out my own salvation with fear and trembling. And they try to even throw the Bible at you. But see, when you talk about that trying the spirit, see, when you're dull of hearing, you're like, say that again, Lord. Is that really what you want? Is that, but see, what you want is, and this really ties down to, there's there's some people, I really feel pressed right now. There's some people that have that have struggled to, to have that connection, even in worship, even when the music is going and God's presence is here on a Sunday, they're just kind of like, okay, here we are again. You know what I mean? Like, yep, oh, those are great words. Ooh, ooh I don't like that song. Ooh, this is kind of loud. It's kind of hot in here. It's kind of... And it's like, you're car so carnally minded. You're so dull. You're so dull of hearing that you're not even aware that he's in this room right now, that he can minister, that he can do all these things. And I'm telling you that if you would go after these things, if you would say, God, I want to, I want to know that I know that I know that you've spoken to me, then you got to get in his presence and get around him. But see, you can't get in his presence until you're until you've been cleansed. You you ask for forgiveness, he cleanses you from that unrighteousness, and you can then go in and say, Now there's fellowship. He doesn't say, My arm's not too long, I can't reach you, my ear not too heavy, I can't hear you. Your sin has separated us. And I feel like there's some people that have been going to church for a long time, maybe even our church for a long time, that they, when they first got saved, that first love, I talked about at the beginning, I feel like it's coming back full circle. That first love, you know, people would say Jesus and you'd weep. Mm. People would say God is so good and you would just have this flash and this rush of the greatness and, and grace of God and how good he's been for you. And now you're numb mm. and now you're dull. And it's just like in Revelation where it's just like you've lost your first love remember from where you've fallen, go back, build a memorial so that you never, you never lose that again. And I, I think there's some people here that like say, man, I can't remember the last time the spirit just overwhelmed me Yeah, where I felt his goodness and grace. And I was not in control. I remember multiple times in the last 12 months that that's happened to me. I remember sitting in that row right there when we were making the decision to come on staff and we thought we were going to have all this money and I thought the decision was going to be easy. And I was like, yeah, some people are like, man, you're so bold. You're so confident. I sat there weeping with snot running down my face with Joni saying, it's good, brother. He said, he's got you. He said, he's got you. And my soul, it was a Gethsemane moment. My mm. soul just uh, like wanting so bad to just have that faith and let go. And now look at the fruit of it. It's mm. wonderful. But there's people that are coming that God's like trying to get them in that wine press moment. And that goes back to that conviction almost, trying to get you to that moment where he wants to get the good to come forth. And to do that, he's got to kind of crush the stuff around it and get you to that place where you can, where you're broken, where you're ready to receive and say, God, that's it. Like a bucking bronco that finally stops and just starts trotting. And you say, your will be done. I'm not going to fight you anymore. I'm not going to, you know. Um, that I feel like there, there's somebody that's going to be listening to this that's going to say, that's me. I don't know when's the last time I cried in his presence. Not that your emotions should dictate you at all, but they should confirm the work that God's doing. And when I think, when I watch Chosen, I ball like a baby. Man, when I watch anything, I ball like a baby. We were watching, we were watching a movie about, uh, uh, you know, this old man who starts his job, starts a, as an intern at this company, and he's sharing his heart about his wife and the life they had together. And I'm over there just weeping. And Mandy's like, oh, my gosh, you cry at like everything. And it's true because because I see the love of God in everything. And when when you're not dull of hearing, you're sensitive. What's the opposite yeah. of dull? Sensitive. sensitive. You want to be sensitive in the spirit. You want to be sensitive when God moves because He he's a still small voice. He's an unctioning. He's like the wind. You don't know where it's coming from. But if you pay attention, you can tell the direction that it's going. You can look at the effect of things. And I just, I, I really feel like the, I, we wanted to warn people today, the dangers of not 
pressing into that conviction and not letting the cleansing take full effect and not engrafting the word on your body is you get dull, you get insensitive, you get, there's a lack of grace. Let patience have its perfect work. Yeah, I love that scripture. It's perfect work. In so you. you may be entire wanting nothing. Yeah. This rest that Kevin and I are, we, we, we speak from a place of rest. Some of y'all go, man, I'd like watching you guys because there's such an anointing on what you say and there's weight. Your words have weight. And that uh, glory means weighty. And you can, I'm in a different realm than I've never been in before. And it's, it's, it's called rest. When you yeah. labor that you may enter into that rest, when you have the rest of God on your life, the peace of God is on your life. It, 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 demons are terrified of you because yeah. nothing, <laughs> Paul said, nothing moves me. Yeah. When you get to the place where money don't move you, Jobs the economy don't, don't move you. Move you the yeah. politics don't move you. Yes. All this kind of stuff. Uh, you, nothing moves. Paul said, nothing moves me. Yep. I mean, if, if some guy came and prophesied, said, the Holy Ghost says, if you go into that town, they're going to kill you. And he says, okay, thanks, okay. For, the, thanks for the You're word. You're just confirming what I heard. <laughs> he said, but I'm going. And he yeah. went. And you, yeah. nothing moves me. You want to, yes. there's, uh, quit praying for the anointing and enter into that rest. Because when you're in that rest, the anointing will be there. Yeah. And um, because you're coming, you're speaking from a place of assurance. You're speaking from a place of confidence. Yep. And not only will the person that you're ministering know that you have confidence, the demons know when you have confidence. And And that confidence isn't yourself, not like Paul says, not my own confidence of my knowledge and my social status and my learned behavior, my intelligence. None of that confidence, the confidence in him who sent me. Yes. Like 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 when 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 the we Israelites needed to take the land and they come back, there's giants, there's this, there's that. What'd they say? We can Caleb, take them. We are more than able. We are more than able. More than able. Not because we are able, but because the God who sent us is able. And you can't have that kind of faith. You can't enter into that kind of rest. Uh, unless unless you're sensitive to that voice, because the atmosphere here, the atmosphere in America, the atmosphere in your community, the atmosphere in your church, the atmosphere in your marriage can feel one way, mm-hmm. and that will make you want to respond a certain way. But if you're sensitive and you tap into the spirit, the natural things won't matter. Maybe next time when we do a, a, our podcast, we'll talk about what what it means to enter into that rest. Yeah, that'd be rest. Good. Rest sounds like a good word, but. It says labor that you may <laughs> enter into that rest. It's when you, in Isaiah, he said, when you get to the rivers and you get to, and you go through the rivers and through the floods and through the fire, through t- yeah, the through. other side, this is separates the men from the boys, from the disciples, from the converts. They don't go through. Anytime yeah. there's a price to be paid, you just have to go through it. He goes through it with you. That's the key but he'll get you to the other side, but it's on the other side is the rest on the other. The Israelites got to a place where they said, we're not crossing the Jordan. We're not doing this is it. We're going to stay on this side. And they did close enough. Yeah. They (laughs) they didn't enter into the promised land because they wouldn't cross it. They wouldn't go through another river. And, um, that's the key. We'll talk about that. Hopefully. Yeah, I feel like that's a good, that's a good topic to hit on next time. Yeah, if you pay attention to these these videos, they do connect. There is a, is a, a woven thread going through all this. <laughs> Pretty soon we'll be able to back up and kind of see that what that mosaic looks like. Yeah, it's a picture. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate you tuning in and watching us, and uh, we'll see you uh, next time on Iron Sharp and Iron.